So today um, we have a guest. Nick Russo is going to give a presentation on um, some network automation stuff, go through some use cases and answer some questions. So I will turn it over to you, Nick. Hey everyone, um, good evening. Most of you, or some of you probably know who I am. Uh, my lighting is not very good, so I could probably fix it a little bit, but it's kind of dark here and I'm in a recording studio, so not too good. But anyway, uh, Diara asked me to join to talk a little about network automation stuff, and that's what we're gonna do. So I figure, you know, feel like the best way we can do this is I'm going to share uh, my Firefox window here. Let me know if you can't see it. And yeah, so this little, okay, there. A little bit obnoxious, the little zoom bar in the way, but okay, let's start over here. So first things first, um, within the enterprise core test, you don't need to be experts in network automation. You probably don't even need to write a whole lot of code. You just need to understand, again, the use cases, maybe a little bit of basics around how APIs work. You can probably get most of that skills from reading and maybe some, a little bit of tinkering. But what I do want you to keep in mind is that there's some easy ways, there's an easy way to do this in a hard way. And the easy way would be to go to developer.cisco.com and sign up for a free account. So again, I've got a thousand windows open right now, so it's a bit difficult, but I'm logged in. You know, you can log in for free. Uh, there's nothing, you know, there's just access to resources here. And then, you know, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna give you a full tour of this website, but you can click on like discover and there's all these drop downs from, you can do sandboxes, you can do, whoop, can do sandboxes, they have sample code, there's video courses that are free. Most of the stuff is, almost everything on here is free. Uh, forums, uh, guided learning paths. But more importantly about use cases is there is under community, or is it support? I need to find it, I don't know where it is. Oh, it's over here, the uh, DevNet Exchange. So you can go to the code exchange and what that'll do, and then you can go to the automation use cases and it takes you to this site. It's the developer.cisco.com slash network automation slash listing. This is the automation use case library. So for example, you can search for different use cases. Like for example, are you at the you know, walk, run or fly stage? What's your business scenario? Uh, where in the life cycle? So day zero is like initial provisioning. Day one is initial configuration. Day two and day N are uh, follow on operations. Uh, different technology areas. So, you know, you might be wanting to look for use cases relevant to your job. You can search for them here. And the reason I like this page is, you know, if I scroll down a little bit, uh, this first one, I don't know what that is, backup infrastructure configs, but these next three, these are actually my projects. So out of the first four on this page, three of them happen to be mine. So I'll talk about these at a basic level. Of course, you can click on them to learn more. The first one I wrote about two years ago, um, <clears throat> the idea was, you know, if you have a large complex OSPF network, it would be useful to have a way to automatically do some kind of medium depth troubleshooting and say, okay, you know, I have these six routers, you know, I have this intent where these 10 routers are supposed to be in area zero. These four are supposed to be in area one. These two routers are supposed to be ABRs between those two areas. Let me code that into a configuration file and my tool will assert that that is actually true. So if someone goes into the network and monkeys a change in there that we don't want, the tool will report that. It can also report things like errors. It can, you know, if this router is supposed to be an ASBR, but it's not or vice versa. Um, if, if, uh, if you have a, uh, a maximum LSA set, this can enforce that. It can ensure all your timers are matched. It can ensure all your neighbors are up. Uh, those are just basic things that you would want to do on a network to ensure that it's healthy. Uh, that's one of my most popular projects because it's so in depth uh, and it works. I, I want to say it works on Nexus, iOS XR and iOS XE, so it's multi-platform. Uh, the next one is managing NAT statements. So again, you're all learning this now is that the different ways you can configure NAT. One of the ways that you learn is doing one-to-one -one NAT statements is supposed to be poor scale. That's just nonsense. It's only poor scale because it takes a lot of configuration. But if you have a tool to do that configuration, it's actually a pretty decent solution. And this was a problem I had, it was almost three years ago now working for a global SP, where we had to do NAT at five different places, five different regions around the world on five giant routers with hundreds of NAT entries, sometimes thousands on each device that we needed to manage in some kind of 
uh, deterministic way. So I wrote a tool for that. Uh, and the last one is managing route targets for MPLS VPN. So I'm not sure if that's in scope for enterprise core, but long story short is determining your VPN membership through route targets that can get really old when you have hundreds of routers in the network to do that on. So I just wrote a simple declarative solution where you can just say, okay, on this router has these VRFs and for each VRF, here are the import and export route targets that should or should not be there. And based on that list, the tool will ensure that the router matches your intended config. So if you say VRF A should have import export one colon one, and you go on the router and it, it's missing import one colon one, but it has export one colon one and one colon two, well, it'll remove the extra export and it will add the missing import and it will report what those changes were so you get a detection of the changes. And these are just some of the tools that I've written to solve my customers' problems and some of the use cases you can see. And again, you can scroll endlessly through this and, and look at different things to see uh, other use cases that are available. Um, I also want to just point you to uh, my personal website here. So let me just wait for this zoom bar to minimize because it's really annoying. Uh, I'm just going to go back to my main page. Um, so again, I'm not, I'm not here to sell you anything. Uh, I'm not going to try to make you sign up for my courses or give me money. This is all free stuff that I'm showing you here. So if you just go to my webpage, it's njrusmc.net, real basic website, no ads. If you go to code projects, uh, you'll see kind of a highlight of my biggest uh, code projects here. So these first six are the Ansible playbooks. And again, we just saw three of them uh, in the automation exchange, the OSPF one, the um, NAT management one, and the VPN management one. I've also got some performance testing with IPSLA. Um, I've got some arbitrary config command or arbitrary CLI command. So if you want to, if you have, you know, a bunch of different devices, you're like, okay, I want to do a show. I want to back up show run. I want to do show version. I want to do show IP route. I want to do that on all my devices. This will go and collect all that information and store, store those in text files uh, to make it nice and easy to use. Uh, another project called Make Files and Documents. Um, maybe we'll talk about that later where I, I, I did a YouTube video explaining what that one's about. That's a little bit different. Uh, the thing that's important to understand is even though you're all studying enterprise core, which is networking, obviously, there are so many other use cases beyond networking that automation can be useful for. And you know, all of us here have personal hobbies. We all have different uh, things we like. We all have different political opinions. But one thing that I think is common is that we can use these tools to shape our interest in those things. So just as an example, uh, this top one here is actually a network tool. Again, I had uh, some webinars I did with DevNet that you can check out on that. Uh, this was actually in relation to a cyber attack that happened in the US last year and I was dispatched to deal with it and I used the network automation to, to solve that problem. Uh, Stig compliance is another security related thing, but these last three have nothing to do with networking at all. So one thing that I like to follow, if I just click on this, I'm not going to click on it. I don't want to piss anyone off. But long story short is I'm keeping track of uh, election polls. And I wrote a tool, uh, just a Python script that will go and collect information from aggregate, you know, aggregated pollsters and just display that information on a serverless website that I built using AWS Lambda. So I made a tutorial on YouTube that explains how that works. Again, this is more of just understanding how automation can be useful for you and the things you like, not necessarily uh, network stuff. Now I realize a lot of you are thinking network cases, network use cases, and that's okay. But I would just challenge you to expand your thinking. Another example is business stuff. Some of you, I know like, you know, Dierra is out there hustling, I'm hustling, some of you, some other people are out there hustling too. And if you're doing that, you want to find ways to use automation to actually help your business. So it's not just, okay, you know how to write automation so you can sell that service to a customer. That's an external function. Consider how automation can help you internally. So for example, this, you know, we're not going to get into it, but when I do my professional courses, I like my audio to sound really good. You know, I've got a mic over here. Uh, but at the same time is, you know, my voice alone is, is okay, but I like it to be, you know, smoother. I like the volume to be increased. I like the noise to be canceled. I want it to sound like a, like something that just came off of, you know, a recording studio. So what I do is I take my audio samples and I upload them to a website where I pay, you know, a couple cents per minute. To, for them to process my files and I download an updated file and I merge that into my content. It works really well. It saves me a lot of editing time too. So it's a huge money saver, but what I used to do is I used to upload these files manually through the web interface and that's okay, but I figured <clears throat> it'd be a lot easier if I could say, here's all my source files in a directory, load those up through the GUI, use the REST API, and then download all the files again. So this is just a simple automation that I use that saves me money in my own personal business. It has nothing to do with network automation, 
but it solves a real business problem. So I wouldn't, you know, for those of you who like sports or those of you who like music or whatever, see if there's some kind of thing that you can write or research, you know, maybe not now, maybe after your test uh, that you want to explore because this is, this is how you get excited. Uh, solving problems that matter to you or that matter to your customers, that's a lot more exciting, in my opinion, than going through some BS Python exercise online where it tells you to sort the list backwards and skip every other element. I mean, like, okay, that doesn't excite me. Maybe that excites you. That just, those, those examples that lack context make it really hard to get started. So I'd encourage you to pick something, whether it's network related or not, uh, and start there. So last, I just want to point you to another thing. On my website, I have these uh, free job aids. And one thing that I think will be especially interesting for a lot of you are these Postman collections I do. So for those who don't know, Postman is just a simple, it's a uh, graphical interface program that you can install. And it's basically an HTTP client. So if you're not strong with HTTP and you just want to test it out, you can craft different requests, send them to a remote HTTP server, get a response and dig into the details. You can adjust the headers, the authentication parameters, the body, the request method, the URLs, you can add variables. It can really do a lot and you can save it. So as an example, you can see all the products here. I've got 10 different collections. Uh, you know, maybe you want to download a couple of these, like download the RESTConf one, for example. I don't know what's on your test, but you can just kind of look at these and say, okay, if I want to create a new network device in Meraki, what does that look like? What does the request look like? What does the response look like? So I provide those examples and you can use these in your own environment if you want to do that for learning. So some of you who are less skilled with programming or you don't have a computer science background, or you've never worked with uh, Python before ever, uh, and you don't want to spend three weeks learning the basics of Python just so you can uh, pass a written exam. I, under I completely understand that. This might be a way that you can maybe short circuit some of that Python stuff and just say, okay, I want to understand the use cases. I want to understand HTTP a little bit better. I want to understand how APIs work, but not necessarily have to write all the code to make it fully automated. So that's my kind of initial spiel in you know, again, just to go back to the beginning, okay, first of all, sign up for DevNet. They have free videos, all kinds of stuff you can watch here and different people's journeys. There's forums, there's all kinds of things there. The automation use case library, again, this is specific to network automation where you can find, you know, again, various use cases there. You can also go to DevNet, you know, they have different webinars that they run and blog. There's a DevNet blog somewhere. Again, Google's your friend. I don't know all the links off the top of my head. I've written two blogs for DevNet. Um, in fact, let me just show you real quick. Go to my blogs. Uh, I've got blogs on all different kinds of stuff in business investing. You don't care about that. But towards the bottom, um, I've got these uh, two blogs here on the NARC project. This was the thing I wrote when I did that uh, cyber attack defense. These explain a project I did to do ASA rule verification, which you might enjoy. You can watch the blogs, and there's also webinars uh, on those as well, which are linked in, uh, linked into the blog, I should say. So those are, that's kind of how I would recommend. Now, the only other thing I'm going to say is if you go back here and go to free videos, you go to my YouTube channel, you know, you can pick any of these that you want to watch. These are just different use cases for automation. Uh, I run this website based on an automation script. Uh, there's not actually a server. This is all serverless. Uh, my website is built that way. I published a book using automation. I didn't write it in Word. I wrote it in a different language and built a pipeline to publish it. Uh, the election poll tracking I talked about, you can watch the video on that, but probably most importantly uh, up here, this interrupt session, this automation for bureaucracies. If you're in an environment where you're trying to do automation, but your job isn't letting you or there's challenges involved, you can see how I solved this problem. This was a talk I gave in Las Vegas uh, last spring. Well, you can learn a little bit more about that. So between everything I've shown you today, I've given you probably eight to 10 hours. I don't expect any of you to go through all of it, but cherry pick the things that are interesting to you and see if it, it helps you understand the automation bits a little bit better. Now, in some of these YouTube videos, we do a lot of code walkthroughs. They're actually pretty educational. So if you want to see some examples of how the pieces fit, those can be useful. Um, again, these projects are almost all of these are open source. Uh, only a very small number of my projects are closed source because they are proprietary to my business. I don't want to give away trade secrets, but the vast majority of every, everything I've talked about today is open source. So you should be able to see all that. So that being said, I am going to ask if there's any questions. Hello, can you hear me? Hi. Hi, Nick. Patrick here from Nigeria. So um, 
pretty much a lot of um, work you put into a lot of the things you've showed us. Um, I'm a great admirer of your work. Um, so um, the question I want to ask is, um, aside plural site, do you have um, any other um, study, um, third party study um, vendor you work with? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah, I'll, just because you asked, I'll answer the question. Um, I work with O'Reilly, so it used to be called Safari. I do live courses through them. I know Diera has attended at least one. I have another one coming up in a week on Network DevOps on the 23rd. So I do some live training with them. Uh, when it comes to recorded videos, right now I'm uh, exclusively working with Foresight, but yeah, I do do some live training. So if you have a subscription, you can join these courses uh, with no additional cost. Um, I offer four. I have a Python class, an Ansible for network class. Uh, I'm, I have a new class starting in September, which is uh, REST APIs with Python, which might be interesting for some of you. That starts, I think, on, what was it, the 18th? Yep, that's the debut of that one. Uh, and then network DevOps. Um, now, in terms of, in terms of other, um, like if you're just trying to get started with other like free stuff, like if you don't have subscriptions to these, the DevNet videos are, are really good for that. Um, I would say that they're, they're, I don't want to say less professional, but they're less tight. So for example, uh, at Pluralsight, you can watch a 90 minute course and walk away with four hours of DevNet video just by comparison, just because the DevNet stuff, it's not, it's not really boiled down. It's kind of like this, it's more conversational. It's not very boiled down. It's not heavily edited. Um, it's a little more loose, which is fine. Uh, you'll just spend more time watching it. But I think for the position that you're all in and the amount of knowledge you need to pass the enterprise core exam, the DevNet stuff is gonna be more than enough. Uh, you know, if you wanna go like hardcore and go into the more of the pull site stuff and do DevNet Associate, then we can talk about that later. But I don't wanna sell anyone on that right now because I think it'd be a distraction from some of the stuff you're doing. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, any other questions? So let me ask this, how many of you have done any automation work at all? I haven't done any. Okay. Sorry, what was the question? Question was, how many, how many of you have done any network automation at all, like in your whole career? No, okay. I haven't. Okay. Uh, I tried to do the, not in a production network, but in the simulation using CMA. I tried to use uh, non-air in Nitmico. I just do yeah. that one, just to show configuration something just like that, four or five routers. Sure. Yeah. So net, I mean, yeah. It, there's there's so many different ways to do it. There's a, an unbelievable number of different tools you can use. And again, I'm not I'm not a tool guy. I don't I don't stand one tool over the other. They're all they all have their use. Um, but yeah, NetMeco is a good place to start for those who haven't. Uh, assuming you know a little bit of Python, it can be a very very powerful approach. Um, yeah, so my, my take would be, you know, again, for, the, for those who don't know me, I've got a CCIE in routing and switching, I've got a CCIE in service provider, and I have a CCDE. So I've gone through, you know, before I did automation, I've been doing traditional network engineering for a long time. And I've achieved a level of expertise there for which I'm known. And I know that the enterprise core exam, and if some of you are going to move on and do the advanced routing, and, and some of you may even go for your CCIE at some point, uh, the, the automation portion of it is going to be very small. Again, you're just going to need to understand some of the basics around APIs uh, and how those pieces fit. In fact, let me, let me do this. So if you go to uh, publications, this is where I sell my books and my white paper. So most of, the, most of the stuff on here is free anyway. But if you go to the, this link here, it says CCIE Evolving Technologies book. This is that code project that publishes the book. And you click on that, some of you, this book has probably 100,000 readers by now. It's free. Haven't updated it in a year, but it's, it's, still, it's still fine. But if you look on the kind of the left here, actually, I'm not sharing, am I? You, you probably can't see this. Let's, let me stop. Could you, could you see that or not? 
Yeah, we could see that. Yeah, it was up. Okay. Oh, you know why? It, it worked because um, cause it's in Firefox. I thought for some reason it was going to open the Adobe. But yeah, so this is a PDF. You can download it. You know, it's not, you don't have to be like logged into the website or nothing. Download this PDF. You can see on the left, there's, you know, all different chapters. Talks about cloud programmability and IoT. So for you, if you just go to the network programmability section, which is section two, um, just click on that and just read this chapter and look at some of the code samples in it. It just talks about everything, you know, netconf, yang, data structures, APIs, gives you kind of the high level overview with some small samples and, you know, we break this open and device programmability, excuse me, everything from gRPC, NetMiko, Paramiko, netconf, yang, Jinja2, all the kind of basic stuff. You just read that, this is free. So just, re you can read this section and just get a good idea of what you need to know. These, you, you know, before the exams got all changed up, there was 10% of all the CCI written exams had this topics. And that came out in the summer of 2016, up until last summer. So it had about a three year life. And I wrote this book initially, like in by July, like within a month, I had a, a short book out and I continue to update it since then. And I still maintain it because even though the blueprint topics have changed, the information is still really valuable. So I'd recommend you check this out too. Uh, just as another resource that you can read that's very focused on the Cisco exam blueprint topics that would probably give you the information you need to understand the automation use cases and the main tools and processes. Because again, you're going to have to spend so much more effort on OSPF and BGP and all the core networking stuff that I in, in, within this study group that I don't want to distract you by feeding you the automation fire hose because that's just not, not useful for your goal right now. So I would recommend, again, the, the videos on DevNet and this stuff and some of the other uh, use cases I've shown you, that should be more than enough to, to get you through what, what you're looking to do. Okay, any other questions? I don't, want, I don't want to take up all your time tonight, so let me know if you got anything else. Thank you, Nick. Uh, for uh, some part of the automation uh, regarding to some APIs. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of Cisco new platforms like the DNS Inter, the Maraki, the Firepower, different uh, devices. And I try to look your uh, materials in the process, the DevNet Associates materials. And uh, what is your recommendation? We have to know the, it may be not related to the CNP exam topics, but uh, just I want to play with the API thing. And a lot of APIs are coming. So what's your recommendation for that STD recommendations? Yeah, so again, you go to my website and then go to job aids and you scroll down to these postman collections. This is probably your best bet because you won't have to write a lot of, you won't have to write any Python code. And again, SD-WAN, DNA Center, Meraki, iOS XE, Firepower stuff, a bunch of other security products that I'm actively working on. Uh, this should be, more, you know, probably for, for your case, you probably only need the first three. SD-WAN, DNA Center, Meraki, that's probably all you need for enterprise. And if you just download those and kind of look through them, and that'll probably put you in a good position. Um, this will teach you a little bit about how the APIs work on those specific products and how to do specific actions like, uh, in SD-WAN, how to add new policies, how to add SLA classes, how to add new templates, um, whatever, how to add new sites, you know, DNA center, how to add devices, how to do web hooks, how to collect information, how to check network health, how to do DNA ship, um, how, to, how to do um, MVSense cameras, how to do uh, captive portals, how to do uh, web hooks, how to do onboarding, how to add new networks. So those are just, you know, again, you don't have to memorize all that stuff. This is like, now we're getting into the enterprise automation side of things and that's more than you need to know. But my strong recommendation would be just download all these Postman collections or download the ones you care about, read the README, uh, it'll give you some context for how to use it. And then just use that as a study guide, you know, go to DevNet, reserve some sandboxes, mess around with those products, and then use the Postman collection to interact with it programmatically. You know, you could bring up the, Bring up, you know what, let me, just do, let me just do this. Some of you may have never seen Postman before, so let me just, I'm just gonna pull it up. Let me take a second here. 
Yeah. So I don't, I don't have any like sandboxes reserved right now. So I'm not going to be able to like lot, you know, this isn't, this isn't meant to be a training course. I'm just kind of showing you some stuff. So can you all see the, uh, should say good evening. You all see that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so I've got, you know, so I'm currently working on three collections right now. Uh, one for ice, which I just finished today, one for SMA and one for stealth watch. So if I open up the ice one, you can see I've got two different folders, one for ERS and one for PX grid. So if I open up ERS, you can see I've just got these different requests. So if I want to send a post request to add a new network device, um, you know, it'll connect to whatever the ICE host is. Uh, here's the URL. Uh, it's a post request. You can pick what kind of request you want. Uh, it's using um, basic authentication with a username and password. Here are the HTTP headers. Again, if you're not strong in HTTP, you have to know a little bit about that first. But long story short, you know, here's the, the body. And again, I realize my window is kind of cramped here, so it's kind of hard to see, but there's this big JSON body in here. I'm adding a new device. Its name is RAVPN. Uh, it's got these, you know, here's the, the uh, shared secret for radius. Um, here's the IP range, you know, just things like that. Like I'm adding this new network device into ICE for, for 802.1X management. And all I can do is hit send, and then I'm gonna get some responses back. So I've saved some example responses. So if I were to hit send right now, uh, if it worked, this is what would come back. So an empty body, and here are all the response headers. And you can see there's this location header, which has the URL of the device I just added. Now there's this new unique ID that gives me access to that specific object in the API. You know, so if I look at some of the other examples, like a failure because it was a bad request, then we get this response that says invalid JSON input, unexpected character. You know, I had a, I had a formatting error and I got an error and you can see that was a, a status 400 response. Okay, so this is the best way to mess with APIs if you're not good with Python, you just wanna have an easy graphical interactive way to interface with it with an API. So again, when you download the collection, it's gonna be just like this, except different products and different requests. And each collection typically has between, on average, I'd say between 15 and 40 requests, depending on how big of a product it is. So like ICE, for example, um, I only did a few for this one, uh, but something like, you know, Firepower has like 40 each. Uh, each one of the enterprise products has like 35 or 40 each. So you can click through those and that would be my recommendation for learning about APIs if you've never done it before. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Well, thanks everyone. You know, it's always uh, a nice opportunity to come and share knowledge. Hopefully that was useful. Hopefully you have some ideas on what you can do to, to work with automation within the context of enterprise core. Again, keep your eyes on the prize. The focus is enterprise routing and switching for the most part. The APIs is kind of a sideshow. Don't let that overtake you. Just learn the basics that you need to get through the exam. And for those of you who are working on at least your, your CCMP, doing enterprise automation or N auto, that is one of the options you can do. So you can do enterprise core and then you can do enterprise auto to get CCMP. And some of you may want to do that. And if you decide to do that, please reach out to me. Uh, some of you may just want to do advanced routing. Some of you may want to do SD-WAN specialty or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but unless you want to do enterprise automation, just keep it basic and understand how the pieces fit and you'll be in good shape. Okay, so that being said, thanks again, everyone. So Diera, I'll turn it back over to you. All right, uh, thanks, Nick. That was super informative. Um, so now we can just focus on just checking in. Um, how did everybody do with their goals from last week? Um, I know a few people had goals to finish the um, first exam, the material for the first exam topic. So let's just go around, see how that went, and um, Go from there. All right, I'm gonna call on people. Um, well, um, I was gonna go since no one was saying anything. <laughs> I didn't totally finish, um, but I made some leeway. BGP is a huge subject and it was pretty intimidating to me when I first heard about it, but 
slowly but surely as I go through it, because I'm going to, over the videos, right? I'm not just watching the video and going to the next one or reading a chapter and going to the next one. I'm really trying to live in BGP and get the basics. So it, it, I, I haven't finished, but I've learned more. I feel more comfortable, um, a little bit more with it than I did before. So but I didn't achieve my goal, but I achieved learning. So I guess that is a part of my goal overall. Hey, this is Andre. It's kind of loud around that I'm on the bus, but I uh, just wanted to check in that uh, I would try to go through the CPLL like e-learning course for the uh, Nick Russo. I didn't know if he's in the other class or whatever, but I kind of done a lot of his classes already um, on the O'Reilly site and on Portal site. I feel pretty good with where I'm at, at least for this enterprise exam, not necessarily for like a DevNet exam yet. But uh, I've just been trying to work on multicast. I kind of already went through OSPF, um, ISIS, uh, EIGRP, I did BGP. But uh, multicast on the first meeting, meeting, I said, was my one of my probably like worst spots. So I've been reading the TCPIP volume two, the multicast chapter, and I'm probably like 30 pages into it. And the first 20 or so, I would say I was pretty good. And then uh, I got to, I think it was like IGP uh, multicast. I did a different IGPs for multicast. And that's about where I'm at. I probably try and take it like three pages at a time because it's all new to me. So just going pretty slow through that chapter. How's that book for um, helping you understand the, the topic? Um, so I really like, uh, I know Doyle read it, wrote it with uh, another woman i can't remember but i've uh i also went through one of his other books it's like uh what was it called like lspf and isis and uh large ip scale network thing and that was also written like early 2000s but i really like the way he explains things and uh he does get like i don't know it's kind of like a better written rfc because he kind of goes like packet by packet like uh the headers and everything he goes pretty in depth but he has like, I don't know, good background. Like it's, it's easier to read an RFC, but it's as it's as informative, I guess, if that makes sense. Cool. cool. Uh, anyone else want to share? Uh, yeah, I will. Um, this is uh, Chris, by the way, I made it through halfway of the architecture section. Um, on the Cisco exam talk that's for the Encore uh, exam. Um, I made it halfway through and then I got pulled away um, into work. So, um, you know, work kind of gets in the way sometimes of studying, but it is what it is. Yeah, same. Um... I'm almost done with the architecture section. Um, just been kind of reading here and there um, as I have a minute and doing the, um, I started the Cisco, Cisco course that I have. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, if I had to choose, I kind of like the CBT nugget material a little bit better. Um, Cisco's very cut and dry. So how it does it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so hopefully um, I want to have the videos uh, wrapped up this week. But I think I'm going to end up just using CBT nuggets and just kind of use the Cisco course as a reference for the more difficult topics, um, which I'm expecting to be the routing and the, um, the, M the MPLS, not MPLS, multicasting um, topics. So just kind of reference those if I need a different approach to it, but yeah. I, I did recently purchase the um, Kevin Wallace uh, CCMP uh, videos. I haven't got into those just yet, but I was just curious if anybody else has taken any of his courses or specifically the CCNP and what that was like for them. 
I mean, he makes it pretty easy to understand, uh, but I haven't actually purchased anything from him, excluding the NP videos. I've only seen some of his uh, training videos like on YouTube and stuff like that. So I'm assuming it's pretty much the same. Yeah, I love Kevin's work. Um, I've used his stuff to pass the CCNA and I do have the new CCNP Encore. Um, he collaborates with another person. I um, can't remember his name right now, but they're partners now in, in Kevin's business. So I like the videos with Kevin. The other guy, nothing against him. It's just his style is a little different. But um, so when I come across a video with him, I kind of pass it and go into, I have CBT Nuggets as well. So I'll just alternate, uh, look at Kevin's and sk skip the other guy because his, his style is just different for me. But I love the videos. Um, his, Kevin's style is very easy. He yeah. makes a plane. Um, his uh, analogy is awesome. And um, he's a very family oriented guy. So he tells a lot of family stories in there. So he breaks it up. It's not always uh, just tech, tech, tech. So right. I like it very much. Yeah, I was going to mention too, if you have O'Reilly, he's got a uh, route and switch and uh, the old TCMP. He's got videos for all of those on O'Reilly. And uh, you'll also notice his voice if uh, you pick the CPLL, the new one. He, I recognize his voice. He's probably got like three or four sections in there where I can hear his voice pop in, where he's the one going through the slides and stuff. But yeah, I really like Kevin Wallace as well. All right, um, so I hope the uh, Nick's presentation was helpful. Um, he has offered to come back after, you know, we get a little bit further into um, the material, particularly the automation material. He also has offered to come back to do some stuff um, related to like routing. So if you guys go through the material and have questions and, and would like to invite him back, just let me know so I can coordinate with him. Um, I am working on getting someone to cover some BGP material for the week of the 24th. Um, if I can pull up my calendar. Yeah. So the week of the 24th will be focusing on uh, BGP. Um, and we go from there. Um, so how does that sound for everyone? That, that works. I feel like BGP is going to be a kind of a more complicated topic, especially if you haven't worked with it in the real world. Um, so quick question, what are you guys uh, using to lab GNS3 or EV, ENG? I use EVNG. I used new energy before, but uh, I installed same in uh, this week. I'm um, starting playing with uh, the new CMA. Yeah, I, I have a live lab, so I'll be using that. And um, CBT Nuggets, they have the virtual labs connected to their videos. Oh, nice. I didn't realize that. Yeah, for the CCMP, uh, certain sections, certain videos will have the live lab. So they'll say, hey, try and do it yourself and then watch the video or just wherever you are and wherever you feel comfortable. So it's really cool. It's it's easy and, you know, not the right equipment, but of course, having equipment, you get the real hands on if you haven't had it before. Okay. Cool. Um, so if you, if anybody wants to set some goals for the next week, you can go around and do that. I'm still going to chug along with BGP. Um, I'm actually liking it. It's so robust and it's the internet protocol, right? So learning about the, path, the different path attributes and 
how you can um, edit them and uh, customize them in order to uh, prevent loops and to choose certain paths is it, really cool. So I've just been loving it. But I try and peel off a little bit and look at other things. I started the IP services and just going over NAT and uh, NTP and things of that, of such. Hey, this is Andre. Um, I'm going to try and finish the multicast chapter, I suppose, and then I'm going to re-go over BGP and then uh, go over route maps, uh, route manipulation, and uh, that kind of stuff, I guess, is uh, the more complicated part for me. Um, and look forward to seeing you guys next week. Um, I'm going to work on finishing architecture. And I think I'm going to pivot um, just because at work, I'm starting to dive a little bit more into routing. Um, so I think I'm going to do routing and NAT. Um, I'm going to take some time to just go over the IP services section and then um, start looking at BGP just because that's where work is taking me um, and go from there. All right, um, if no one else wants to share, that's cool. Um, I do also want to let you guys know if you have a topic that you think you're pretty solid on and you know, you want to kind of test where you are. I'm definitely open to having someone host um, a session um, so you can kind of gauge your understanding and go just, you know, email me and let me know if you're interested in that. Hey, this is uh, Andre one more time. Um, uh, just on that, I wanted to ask, uh, is there like a, because I'm commuting home usually every time during this time of the week, is there like an alternate time? Like, could we do like, if I wanted to give a class on like a Sunday night or something, to do like an alternate time? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. I'll email you. Awesome. All right, so I will chat with everyone uh, next week.